message to light workers January 27, 2017. By Caroline Ogiana Ryan. The latest guidance from the Galactics, Earth Elementals, Ascended Masters, Fairy Elders, and Angelic Beings known as the Collective. Greetings, dear ones. We are pleased to have this chance to speak with you today. Our writer has a few questions for us today, and so, we welcome you to our discussion. C.O.R., what can we do about the fact that so many people are feeling angry and disempowered now? There is also a ton of divisiveness happening in the U.S. Social media is full of vitriol against one president or another. What is happening energetically, and how can we help to raise these energies to a higher level? The Collective What is happening energetically, dear one, is nothing less than an earthquake within human consciousness. Much of this has to do with the shifts being felt astrologically at present. But as well, there are new light codes, and new informational light data, coming to Earth from various places in the universe, via the great central sun, and Earth herself has entered a new era, a new reality. And so you see the old regime striking out as vehemently as they can, using both mind control technologies and the old fear inducing measures of speaking of war, plunder, mindless destruction, loss of health care for millions for the sake of chaos itself. You see the false bravado and the claims of power that are baseless or empty, and they are recognized as such by many around the world. And within the United States itself, there is great worry, from those who are feeling the effects of both word energies and the technology that broadcasts dense energies, as well as images of power misused. Not so many there are seeing through the process in a complete way, seeing through the deceptions, let alone attempting to rescue higher meaning from the swirl of emotional reaction. Now, if you were to step back a bit, and look at things from the perspective that this is old toxicity, coming up to the surface, and realize that it must come up things must appear to be getting worse, before they can improve this puts a different face on things. We do not wish to deminutize the experience of the many millions who fear mass deportations, environmental ruin, further risk of climate change, human rights abuses, misuse of national budget, the normalization of bullying, and many other concerns. These are significant issues, and it is understandable that those who feel the urgency of the moment would be up in arms just now. But understand that, as we noted in our last message, this is not all that is occurring. And it is possible, regardless of which side of the political fence you sit on, and the time has come to dissolve that fence, it is possible to establish a place within yourself of peace and calm. To rise above the noise and confusion, and to decide. I will act. I will do all I can outwardly. But I will also use my visualizations and active ability to send light and higher love to every corner of this globe. I will daily meditate and this is not a passive act to evoke energy patterns that move the masses and the events of the day into peace and prosperity, into equal rights for all. Into the end of discrimination and misuse of power, war, division between groups, and belief in loss and scarcity. We are not alone, and I will carry the presence of so many higher beings, particularly the power of the Divine Feminine, forward with me, and spread that beautiful realization and presence through my own presence spread it all over this earth. This is what the indigenous elders and often, an entire tribe would do, for many thousands of years, to handle problems such as the possibility of war, environmental disaster, illness, extreme weather, or other difficulties that could bring down the vibration of their entire tribe. They would gather and decide which of the universal powers they needed to call upon which gods or goddesses, which energy factors, and which patterns of higher light, to address a particular problem. Then they would enact either a known ritual or create a new one. And this ritual was not merely to raise the spirits and outlook of their own inner selves, or that of the tribe. These were sacred moments of active CO creation. In these moments of chanting, song, dance, or prophecy, vibrations were enacted that shifted the outer reality of the tribe, so that they were actively and consciously moving into another reality another timeline or a new manifestation that was so profound, they were in some ways moving to another, higher vibrational timeline. They would not have dreamt of sitting and complaining, 
let alone spent hours or days writing out or speaking their frustrations with others, arguing their case against another, as if that sort of back and forth clash of ideas solves the problem at hand, for it does not. They took active CO creative measures to ensure that they were not abandoning their community, which included children and elderly whose vulnerability needed to be protected, to the crisis they were facing. They took full responsibility for shifting from one reality into another one of their own creation. A reality that they knew the loving forces of this universe not only supported, but expected them to enact. That is what is needed here, dear one. Not more posturing, anger, or debate. The women and their friends who marched last Saturday took up just this active, co-creative stance, some without realizing fully the power and importance of the ritual they were enacting. For with every sign, every declaration of what they would or would not live in, they were in their own way declaring to the universe which reality they would live in. Shifting the frequencies up to a new and higher level. And so, is this the last word in changing the world? It cannot be, for though powerful, these gatherings are limited in certain respects. Those in power notice them, but tend to wait until they subside. And yet much change was enacted, not merely by the gathering of human selves, but by the outpouring and concentration into a singular cause human rights, and with it, planetary rights and this, dear ones this actively shifted the direction that the human race is headed in. There is still work to be done, to directly write and steer public policy and laws into a closer resonance with what Nizara brings once fully unfolded. Yet this one day, in which marches and speeches, songs and chants and declarations, occurred at the same times, and with the same intention, all over the planet, has created a powerful wave of light and higher love that is still reverberating through your reality, shifting not only thought forms but outer forms as well. Its influence will be felt for many years to come, as other similar streams of thought pour into that singular stream of light, and love for all life, strengthening it many times over, and establishing with that impetus a new higher vibration in human affairs. C.O.R., and is this all connected to Nizara? The collective. That is the most beautiful part of the equation, as you would say. This is the very spirit of Nizara itself, come home to take up its vibrational realness in your very own backyard not only in the United States, but planet Earth, in general. C.O.R., and yet, I feel a tendency in myself and many light workers, to treat Nizara as an ephemeral dream. Even while we're telling people about it and handing out flyers, and asking people to sign the Nizara petition, we're trying to protect ourselves against the disappointment of not seeing it enacted yet. It's a strange dichotomy. Because I try to spend time feeling the reality of Nizara happening now, being here now, but I feel like I'm trying to avoid feeling disappointment that it's not fully here yet, at the same time. The collective. And yet we have said many times, Dear one, it is being enacted that is a process, not a single moment. And days such as were seen on the 21st of this month of January was one of those moments an empowering and beautiful sign of human sovereignty, coming to the fore. Do you imagine that Nizara could be enacted, before human beings demanded to be free? Before they required that all government come up to the level of divine government? That would be equal to wanting to create something in a laboratory, without the chemicals and elements needed to create that particular outcome. Any good scientist would ask how far you expected to get, without all the ingredients needed to create your intended outcome. This is why we say, even if it appears that much ground has been lost, consider that some ground is temporarily lost, for the very great outcome of all of it being gained. The current run of events has spurred on the population of this planet to sit up, realize what is happening, and to wake up thoroughly some perhaps, for the first time in many years, or the first time in their lives. Nothing less than the awakening of an entire planet is occurring now, dear ones. And so, do we weep for you? No. We cannot, for we see the depths and the heights of your dreams of a fifth dimensional earth life, and your active declarations and expectations that this is so now the very stuff of manifestation power. For this is a moment you have created to spur on not merely a disturbance in the force, the stars and planets have brought you that already, but a great awakening, spread across your earth, 
whom you are protecting with every fiber of your being, every bit of heart power you possess. And we would say, the beauty of this is immense, dear light bearers. And astounding to behold. Namaste, friends. We honor your path. You are never alone. If you enjoy these messages, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.